All right, so we are on number 17 now. So steps to solve an equation. Uh, the first step is to distribute if you can. So whenever you guys see parentheses, you need to think of the distributed property. Uh, next, you will need to combine your like terms. And remember, if they're on the same side, you will be using the same operation. And then if they're on different sides, then you'll be doing the opposite operation. So you will either add or subtract to get terms of variables on one side of the equal sign and opposite uh, side for op opposite operation. Uh, then you'll do the same thing with the constant. So you'll add or subtract to get constant terms on the other side of the equal sign. And then the fifth step would be to either multiply or divide to get the variable by itself. So again, distribute, then combine your like terms. You will either add or subtract your variables and then add or subtract your constant terms first before you do the last step of multiply or divide. All right, characteristics of equations. You guys found out that we have three different types of equations that we can have. We could have one solution, no solution, or infinitely many solutions. So if you have one solution, the coefficient must be different. So remember, coefficient is um, attached to the variable. And then the constant may be the same or different. So if you have that, you will have an equation that turns out to be one solution. Um, if you have an equation with no solution, the coefficient has to be the same. Because if it's the same, then it's going to cancel each other out on both sides, and then you'll just be left with different numbers. Um, and then same thing with the constant. The constant must be different as well. So if you have the same uh, coefficient, different constants, then you will have no solution. And then the last one is infinitely many solutions. So the coefficient and the constant must be the same. So if you have the same thing on the left side and the same thing on the right side, you will have infinitely many solutions. All right, so we have some equations down here to solve, so let's go ahead and solve them. So this first one that I'm looking at, I can see some like terms that I can combine together. And since they're on the same side of the equal sign, I can just add them like normal. So we have 4c plus 2c, and that will give me 6c. My plus 6 will drop down as well as the equal 24. Now we just have a basic two-step equation. So your first step is to subtract the 6 on both sides. You get 6c equals, oh, I can't do math in my head right now. What is that, 18? And then last step to get c by itself, since c and 6 are multiplying, the opposite of multiplying is to divide. So then you should get c equals 3. So since these were on the same side, you would combine them like normal, and then you just have a basic two-step equation. All right, B, you notice how we have parentheses, so we will need to use our distributive property here. So remember, distributive property, you're taking your outside number and multiplying it times everything on the inside. So if I were to take negative 2 times 3x, I get negative 6x. You can drop down your minus sign, or I taught my students to think of this as a negative 5. So negative 2 times a negative 5 would be a positive 10. And then now you just have a basic two-step equation. So subtract 10 on both sides. You get negative 6x equals negative 24. Divide both sides by negative 6. And you get x equals a positive 4. All right, C, now we have uh, variables on both sides of the equal sign. So this is when we need to use uh, the opposite property to get them all on one side. So I'm going to move this 3n over to the left side over here. So the opposite of a positive 3n is a negative 3n. So I can subtract 
three on, on both sides. And please remember when you do this, you need to subtract it with your like term of four in. You cannot subtract three in from 24 because they are not like terms. So my three ins over here will cancel out because that equals zero. Over here, I'll be left with one in plus 24 equals 59. So then my last step, since this is just in by itself pretty much, I'll just subtract 24 on both sides. And I get an answer of n equals 35. So when you have variables on both sides, this is when you'll use the opposite operation to get them over on one side and then all the other constants over on the other side. So same thing with D, we have variables on both sides, but notice how we have to use our distributed property first. So you're going to take this 2 times everything on the inside. So I'll be left with 12H equals 8 plus 2 times 5 is 10, so this will be 10H, and then 2 times 3 is 6. Now notice I still have like terms on one side of my equal sign, so I can combine 8 plus 6 together on the right side before I start solving the equation. So now I have 12H equals 10H plus 14. And now I can move all of my variables on one side. So since I already have a constant over here, I'm going to move my 10H to the left. So to do that, I will subtract 10H on both sides. And I now have 2h equals 14. So then my last step to get h by itself is to divide by 2 on both sides. And you get h equals 7. Again, you guys can pause this video at any time. I'm just going to keep going. Uh, part e, so I need to use my distributed property first. So I'm going to take this 2 times everything on the inside. So 2 times 2p is 4p. 2 times this minus 3 would be a negative 6. And now I just have variables on both sides. So I need to move uh, my variables on one side of the equal sign. So I'm going to move this 4p over here on the left. And when I do that, notice how these 4p's will cancel because that equals 0. These 4p's will cancel because that equals 0. So I'm just going to be left with negative 6 equals 3. And hopefully you guys know that we can never have negative 6 equals 3. So whenever you get down to a problem like that, that means that this is going to have no solution. And yes, you have to write no solution. You can't just leave this as your answer. You have to tell me that that's going to give you a no solution. All right, and the last one, um, I can combine like, like terms on the left side of my equal sign as well as the right side because I have y's over here. So 7y minus 2y will give me 5y. And I'll still have a minus 3. Uh, same thing on the right side, I can combine my constant. So I have a negative 8 plus a positive 5. So this will give me 5y minus 3 again. And I can stop here because when I see that I have the left side equaling the right side, when I have the same thing on both sides, I should automatically know that this will give me infinitely many solutions. And you don't have to keep solving it. You can if you want to, uh, but you don't have to because you're just going to end up with negative 3 equals negative 3, which still gives you infinitely many solutions. All right, and please notice how we showed proper algebraic steps here, so just make sure you guys do that on your test as well. All right, backside, create an expression so the given equation has the specific type of solution. So if we want a no solution, remember that you have to have the same coefficient but a different constant. So I at least need to have 4x in here but then it can be a different constant. So I can put like plus 10 or literally it could be any number. So this is just a possible answer. Uh, when you have no solution, or sorry, one solution, you need to have a different constant, okay? And then you could have a different number or it could be the same. So as, if you're looking for one solution, as long as it's pretty much different from that, it will be right, okay? Because this will give you one solution. And then if you want infinitely many solutions, remember your left side has to equal your right side. So I am just going to write down 4x equals 7. 
because if I have 4x plus 7 equals 4x plus 7, I'm going to get infinitely many solutions. All right, uh, Marco and Ellie both saw the given equation. One of them made a mistake. Identify which student made the error. Explain what error was made. So if you guys are looking here, um, I'm just going to look at Marco. So he moved 2x. Looks like he did that right. He subtracted 7. So it looks like his was right. So let's go over here. And I automatically see this step right here that she did not do correctly. Because if she's trying to move the 2x to the left side, she needs to do the opposite of adding 2x, which is to subtract it. And she actually just added it. So I found my mistakes, and I'm going to identify the mistake and then explain what the error was. So I'm going to say Ellie made the mistake. And then I'm just going to put for her first step, she added 2x to both sides. when she should have done the inverse operation by subtracting 2x. So as long as you have something along those lines by just identifying who made the mistake and then what the mistake was and what she should have done, uh, you will be counted correct with credit. All right, and this last one, uh, Samuel needs to earn at least $45 for a new video game. His dad offered to pay him $20 for mowing the grass and $7 an hour to help break the leaves in the yard. How many hours must Samuel help uh, break the leaves? So define a variable, set up an inequality, and solve. So we haven't talked about inequalities yet, but we're just going to do a problem real fast. So um, inequalities and equations are similar, except instead of equal signs, you're either going to have your less than, greater than, uh, oh, sorry, this is greater than, greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to, as your inequality symbols besides just an equal sign. So... There's going to be inequality words, so in this case it's going to be at least $45. So at least means that he can make exactly $45 or he can make more than $45 as well. So when it says at least, this is talking about the greater than or equal to symbol. So when you go to set up your inequality, you're going to set it up just like an equation. So his dad offered him to pay $20 for mowing the grass, so that's a set amount so that is going to be represented as your constant. Um, then he's going to make $7 an hour to help break the leaves. We're trying to find out how many hours. So this is where our variable is going to go with the 7. And then that at least 45 will be your inequality part. And then after this, you're just going to solve this like a basic equation like you would. So first step is to subtract 20 on both sides. You get 7x is greater than or equal to 25. Then you would divide both sides by 7. And if you were to plug this in your calculator, you would get 3.57 hours. And when you get this, you always want to round. Okay, so if I were to round this, this would round up to 4. So when I were to explain it, I would say Samuel must work at least four hours to buy a new video game. So again, inequalities are similar to equations. You just will have an inequality sign instead of an equal sign. And then if you get a decimal, you're going to have to round it and make sure you round it correctly to make the statement true still. Okay. And I did forget to do one thing that was define the variable. So what, what was I trying to find? The amount of hours. So my variable is going to equal number of hours. 
So just make sure you read directions, follow all the directions, make sure that you're doing everything that the question tells you to do. Um, if you guys have any questions, email me or your teacher, and then that should be it. Thank you, guys.